الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم when you spend time with the people who do the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you become privy to their insights concerning the world around them and they subhanallah see the whole world as a reminder of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or as a reminder of his deen and when you sit with them because they see everything as a manifestation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you begin to learn how to use the world as a mechanism to remind you of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words and what basically the world then becomes like a tasbih now you know when we want to be reminded to do the dhikr of allah we keep on our a lot of people in their pockets they keep a tasbih and that tasbih has 33 beads or you know 100 beads and 33 33 34 and people use this as a means to remind themselves to do the dhikr of allah but the reality is that the entire creation is a big tasbih and when a person interacts with that creation it should remind them to re- to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we were once sitting with sheikh zulfikar who obviously you're aware is my sheikh and myself my wife and i think maybe it was the two of us or maybe it was one other person three of us were sitting and sheikh zulfikar was talking to us about a tree and all of the signs of, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a believer can take from the tree and all of the signs of the deen that a believer can take from the tree and i remember it was a very long list and you know i made the mistake of not having a pen and paper at that time when he was speaking but it was a very long list and afterwards i was just scrambling to jot down some of the points that he made and some of them i had written down and and i and i have written it in front of me and so i'll i'll share those with you but the the way that they look at allah's creation is so different than the way that the average person looks at allah's creation we drive by thousands of trees and don't think once they drive by one tree and think a thousand times it's a big difference we drive by a thousand trees and don't think once they pass by one tree and they think a thousand times so he was talking about learning to read the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the universe is a reminder of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how even just a tree a simple tree would be an example of that so he said that one of the things about the tree which is very interesting about the tree is that the tree takes from the ground and it gives to other people the tree takes from the ground a limited amount and then it gives to other people and this is exactly the way the believer should be they should take from the ground they should take from whatever they have available to them and they should 
their primary focus is to give to other people. Now, a believer, what they do is whatever resources they have available to them, they use it as a means to serve others. They are always looking to, to give. And as I mentioned a few days ago, they will take very little. So this was one sign that he, he presented and he gave a lot of detail about, but I remember him saying particularly that we should be like trees. We should take from the ground and we should give to other people. Then he was continuing, and uh, subhanAllah, the, the points get deeper and deeper, but he said another interesting thing about a tree is that it's one half hidden, one half visible. A tree, when you look at a tree, half of the tree is hidden and the other half of the tree is visible. So he said that in the same way the believer should remain half hidden and half visible. What's really going on with the believer should be hidden. The vast majority of people should not know. Our deeds should remain hidden. We should, When we do things, we should try to keep our deeds hidden. We don't need the world to appreciate us. We don't need to show the world what we're doing. Most part of us, it's hidden. But there will be part of us that's visible. We have to pray in jama'ah. You have to give you have to give your zakat to somebody. They'll know that you gave your zakat to somebody. You come into etikaf, people will see that you came into etikaf. So just as a tree is half hidden and half visible, the believer should also be half hidden and half visible. <clears throat> then he gave another beautiful example, which many people make this mistake, uh, and especially in our youth, we should appreciate. He said, much before the tree becomes visible it first establishes its roots. Much before the tree becomes visible, it first establishes its roots. Now, as believers, what we have to recognize is that we have to spend a lot of time developing ourselves before we take on the responsibility of the community or the people around us. Yani, we have to establish deep roots before we even think about making ourselves visible. Now you see, in this day and age, a person learns five hadith and they want their lecture to be on YouTube. They will start lecturing to the wall and they'll record it and they'll put it on YouTube. The person knows nothing. They have, they have no roots and they want to become a big tall tree. I think if you look at anybody who's serious about any aspect of the development in this world, they spend decades developing themselves before they even sprout a leaf. For example, somebody wants to become a physician. They go to school for how long? I mean, they go to undergrad. Nobody knows who they are. They go to medical school for four years. They work day and night. Nobody knows who they are. They eventually go to residency. They work day and night. They interact with very few people, and they're, they're always dependent on the person above them. You know, after almost a decade of training, more than a decade of training, then eventually one day they get to touch a patient. But look how many roots they have to lay down before they make themselves visible and try to benefit a single person. And if that's the matter of being a physician of this life, what about being a physician of the hereafter, being a physician of the soul? If we truly desire to benefit people in deen, then one of the most important things that we have to do before we try to make ourselves visible is develop very, very deep roots. You don't just become a scholar by reading five hadith and memorizing a few lectures on the internet. And then now you want to go and you want to give a lecture to your parents, and then you want to give a lecture to your spouse, and then you want to give a lecture to your neighbor, and you want to give a lecture to the youth group. You have to develop very deep roots before you even think about growing into a tall and visible tree. So that's a very important aspect of our development. And again, it's just a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time we look at a tree, we should think that this is just what's, this is just the visible of it, what's invisible. Another important sign of it that's seen in a tree is that the tree stands totally still despite the varying seasons. Centuries will pass and a tree stands absolutely still despite the fact that there sometimes is a winter and sometimes there's a summer. So in the same way is the iman of a true believer. 
Sometimes there's winter, sometimes there's summer, sometimes there's fall, sometimes there's spring, sometimes it's windy, sometimes it's, the, it's calm, sometimes it's raining, you know, spiritually. But the believer stands totally still. In fact, if you look at the tree and you see how, how look at the qiyam of the tree, how it just stands absolutely still despite all of these variations that, uh, that afflict it. In the same way should our, should, should be our qiyam when we stand in prayer. You know, if we, we stand in prayer for five minutes, we should be absolutely still while we stand in our prayer. So this is another sign present in a tree that the tree remains in its state despite all of the turmoil. But why? Because it grew very deep roots. If there's no roots to the tree, it'll get uplifted with a simple wind. But, of course, if there's very deep roots and the tree is established, it can withstand many, many, many different seasons. And that's another reason why we, de- when we develop us- ourselves in Dean, we don't, you know, we're not just the, it's, we're not, it's not just the flavor of the day. We, you really have to develop yourselves in, ourselves in Dean. We have to spend time doing dhikr and be consistent and develop very, very strong, very, very strong roots before we actually expose ourselves to the seasons of this life. Another beautiful example, beautiful example, is that the value of a tree is based on the fruit that it produces. The value of a tree is based on the fruit that it produces. In the same way, the value of the believer is based on the deeds that it produces. If there's a, if there's a barren tree, it's supposed to produce apples, it doesn't produce anything, nobody gives it a second look. If there's a barren believer, it's supposed to produce good deeds, but doesn't produce good deeds, nobody will give it a second look. So the value of the believer is totally dependent on the, the, the deeds that they produce. Our acts of ibadah, these are, you know, the example that I give is that our acts of ibadah, these are potential energy. And potential energy needs to be converted into kinetic energy before you take benefit from it. You know, potential and kinetic energy from physics people are now sh- shrieking because they have to remember what they did in school. You know, when you take a kid and you draw the swing back and you hold the swing before you release it, you've loaded it with potential energy. But no child is going to enjoy that until you let them go. Then you develop kinetics based on the, based on the potential energy that you fed into that swing. So in the same way, our deeds are potential energy, but we have to convert them to the kinetics of sadaka, to the kinetics of taking care of others, to the kinetics of treating people well, having good manners, etc. These are the kinetics and these are the things that are rewarded in the deen. Al-Muslimu, man salim al-Muslimuna min, but the Muslim is the one who is who, who other Muslims are protected from his hands and his tongue. Right? So again, what's being judged? It's the deeds where that that the definition of a Muslim doesn't say the Muslim is the one who prays, the Muslim is the one who fasts. So many of the hadith that define the Muslim and the Mu'min, they define the Muslim and the Mu'min based on the deeds that they produce. So we should make every effort to take the potential energy that we generate through our acts of ibadah and to convert them into the kinetic energy of good deeds. We are people who serve every single opportunity we can. We seek to find opportunities to serve. We are looking to find opportunities to spend our wealth. We want opportunities to spend our wealth to arise in front of us so that we can have the opportunity to feed the poor. We can have the opportunity to help those who are in dire need. We have the opportunity to clothe the one that doesn't have clothing. We have the opportunity to alleviate the difficulties of, the, of Allah's creation. And, and I've stated to you before, I mean, the greatest example of the ability to take con- potential energy and to convert it into kinetics is the line in the hadith after the line that describes the month of Ramadan in three phases. Right? We talked about the fact that the month of Ramadan, the first of it is Rahmah, the second of it is and the third of it is itqun minan nar. And immediately after that line, the next line in the hadith is that whoever alleviates a difficulty from somebody in the month of Ramadan, their neck is freed from the hellfire. Highlighting that a person who figures out that the, the potential energy of their fast, get, a person who converts the potential energy of their fast into the kinetics of, le- of taking a difficulty from anyone and alleviating it, they free themselves from the hellfire. So we seek opportunities. We seek opportunities to serve. We don't seek opportunities to be served. Now the classic uh, idea in our culture is that we should be served. 
you know, everything is customer service and I'm the customer and I deserve this and I, 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 it's all about me. But we're totally the other way. We want every opportunity to serve. We, and when we're done serving, we don't want anyone to thank us. We thank them for giving us that chance. When somebody comes to you and you do them a good deed, you don't say, uh, yeah, my name is this and this and remember my name and, you know, I, I will do it for you next time. You say, thank you for creating the opportunity because my neck was bound to hellfire and there needed to be somebody who was unfo- in, in, a, in an unfortunate circumstance. And because you carried that burden on your shoulder, I'm able to free myself. Allah chose you to undergo some difficulty and created an opportunity for me. Thank you for bearing it with patience. Because I needed the opportunity more than anyone in the world. So we look at our wealth, we look at our time, we look at our bodily energy, we look at the intellect that Allah gave us, and we use it solely to alleviate the difficulty of other human beings. Just as a tree produces its fruit, and the value of the tree is based on its fruit produced. If it's very sweet and good fruit, the tree is very valuable. <coughs> and if it is a tree that doesn't produce anything and is, and is barren, then nobody pays it any attention. So in the same way, if we are want to have value on the Day of Judgment, it will be based on our deeds. And we should make an effort to produce as many deeds as possible. And then the final example that I could remember, although he, he mentioned many more, is that when people want to get the fruit from a tree, they often use sticks to, 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 to hit the tree. You know, a person sees fruit on the tree, they'll take a stick and throw it at the tree in order to attain its fruit. And often a believer will have to be take the beating of some sticks despite the fact that um, in, in order to allow other people to take benefit from their fruits. And... This is a very classic, common thing as well. You'll see somebody does a good deed and they say that, you know, I'm, I'm the person that got stepped on. A nice guy always finishes last. You know, people treat me this way and, you know, I'm, I'm always being taken advantage of. And why do I have to be patient and everybody just takes advantage of me? But you're, that's just the nature of being a person of deen. You take a lot of hits and you take that beating and you realize that that beating is part of your being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One time somebody came and was complaining about Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu in front of the Prophet sallallahu And, you know, he was sitting there and he just kind of took it, took it, took it, took it, took it, and let the person say whatever they said. And then eventually it got to the point where he couldn't bear it anymore because the Prophet sallallahu was the most important thing to him in the world and he's being criticized in front of the messenger. And it was untrue. So he finally responded. And when he responded, the Prophet ﷺ stood up and left. So Abu Bakr ﷺ was concerned that how come the Prophet ﷺ stood up and left after I responded? And so then he went to Rasulullah ﷺ and he asked the Prophet ﷺ what was the issue. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when you were quiet, the angels were defending you. Until finally, when you said something, the angels left, so I left as well. So this is the nature of... Being a person of deen and having patience, people will say things, people will do things, people will bother you, people will take advantage of you and push you the wrong way and rub you the wrong way, and that's just part part of part of the uh, part of how it works. One time, uh, Prophet Ali Salam received uh, the vic- uh, the spoils from a, from a from a battle, and when he distributed he distributed the spoils, and one of the com- one of, not one of the companions but one of the people in that region. Uh, made a comment that, um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ didn't distribute this fair, in a fair manner. And the word, somebody, somebody said, somebody heard it and said, I'm going to tell the Prophet ﷺ. So they went and told the Prophet ﷺ, he was so hurt. He was so hurt. And he became very angry. And then he said, Musa ﷺ endured more from his people, so I will remain patient. But, you know, I mean, he, because of his being in that position, he had to take a, he took a hit. You know, he took the criticism of people when he didn't have to. He was doing this for the sake of the people. He, he could live his own life and just be in a corner somewhere and never have to expose himself to the criticisms of people and to the, you know, foolish statements that people make and the, you know, the disregard that people have and the fact that people, people don't know how to treat others well. But the nature of being in a position where you benefit people is that you're going to get stepped on. 
it it happens. It's just part of it, and 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 that's acceptable if you realize the reason for which you do what you do. And I have seen so many examples, and I don't have time to go in them. I mean, there are so many examples that I have seen in my life where people get stepped on because they serve. But that's the nature of the tree as well. The tree has fruit, and so people throw sticks at it to get the fruit. Now, I mean, the tree is getting hit with sticks, but people are trying to get the fruit. It's just part of the process. So there will be circumstances where a person who serves will be stepped down, will be taken advantage of, but the person who serves can never be taken advantage of because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the truth about every circumstance and the person expects a reward from Allah and Allah alone. Anyway, these are just some of the lessons that, you know, a believer, a particular a pious believer, learns when they look at the tree. And that's just one small tree that just happens to, we happen to drive by hundreds in a day. <laughs> and imagine how believers interact with the other signs. And we spent so much time last night talking about the value of learning how to read the universe and the value of taking lessons from the universe and the value of uh, of appreciating the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how it puts us in a constant state of remembrance. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us a tawfiq to be among those who appreciate his signs. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make us among those who remember him whether we're standing, whether we're sitting, or whether we're lying on our sides. Wa akhirat da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.